Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. I'd like to nerd out to the science behind how we can keep our houseplants happy and to multiply them in our homes. So if you're into that kind of content, please do subscribe to my channel and send me likes. In today's video, I'm going to show you a huge, huge plant uh, unboxing or plant haul. It's going to take me multiple days to get all the plants. So this is the first ones that arrive. Uh, I bought a lot of, uh, I would say, common plants uh, from Tokopedia because I'm not really buying rare aeroids right now. The prices are just crazy insane. <laughs> so um, uh, for a lot of the common common plants, the prices are relatively the same as before the pandemic. Uh, maybe it's just a little bit of uh, increase. So I figure this is the best time for me to fi learn and discover really uh, lots of cool new species. And I want to invite you guys to come along with me. So I'm gonna open this first. Uh, this is a jewel orchid that I got. Um, yeah, and for all the plants, I'm gonna uh, give you the, the plant ID and also the price on the screen. And this is just so you guys know what we pay for plants here in Indonesia. So this jewel orchid uh, looks really healthy. I don't think I'm gonna do much to it. It looks like it's in the correct uh, medium. So I'm gonna let it recover. There's a little bit of um, limping <laughs> damage going on over here, but I'm just gonna leave it alone for now. Uh, generally happy with it. And here we have a hosta. So uh, two of you guys actually asked me on, uh, on two separate days uh, about this plant species and I looked it up and they actually look really beautiful. They look like aeroids, except they're not aeroids because the flowers look different. So I'm gonna try this uh, hosta out. I have, I have to pot him up and I'm gonna give him my general purpose uh, potting medium. And I read that they do like to be in bright indirect or bright shade uh, light and they don't want to be dried out. So uh, keep them uh, a little bit moist, but not soggy wet, but never let them dry out. So they're kind of like maybe the homalominas, I guess. Ooh, and as I was potting him, I was actually very confused because it's got like a bulb and really thick tuberous roots. And this usually tells me that they don't want to be overwatered because they store a lot of water there. <laughs> Mosquitoes are getting me. So yeah, I'm confused about this guy. I will experiment and I will update you guys to see what the care looks like. Sometimes the, when you look at care online, care tips online, uh, most of them are actually not true. I, I don't know who, someone probably started writing something about plant care and everyone just copy and pasted it. And it's just a, yeah, everyone just got it wrong basically. So I'm gonna update you guys. And it's nice and powdered up. I'm going to give it a fertilizer and I'm gonna clean it for pests as well. And this is from a separate seller. You got my scissors. Pruning shears, sorry. This is really beautiful. Actually, I, I wanted to get like a bromeliad, but they ran out. So I remember uh, that I ordered this instead and it was only 50,000 Indonesian rupiah. It's so healthy. I've been trying to get into aglonemas lately. So yeah, I'm very happy with, with this purchase. 50,000, that's a steal. Yeah, I'm checking and I don't see any pests, but I'm taking no chances. Uh, let me see a little bit of specs here. Yeah, uh, it could be spider mites. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, but I'm gonna treat them regardless. So, and quarantine, I'm gonna quarantine them so they're gonna be away from other plants. Uh, I got more ferns because, um, because the bromeliad was more expensive than this aglonema. So I was just like, okay, let's, let's just buy some I mean, uh, replace them with something cheap. So this is only 5,000 rupiah each. And I have a few of these already in my care and they get so big. Like I bought them like this at this size and in about nine months, Hamdi, they're like huge. <laughs> so I can't wait for these to get big. I love watching them grow. Well, he gave me a lot actually. He gave me, he was supposed to only give, he or she, sorry, the seller's only supposed to give me four. And I also know that they gave me an extra plant. I didn't order this uh, coleus. Beautiful. I think I already have one of these. Oh, and I've got something else. I, I'm not sure if they packed it with the wrong order or I just got a lot of free plants. I'm not sure. I got this. Uh, I don't know. It, I, I don't know what this is. This looks like a juvenile form of an anthurium or I don't know, or a thermophilum. Or <laughs> I'll, I'll hound you guys later for answers. And I think here, yeah, I don't know what these are. I don't know what these are, but I appreciate it. Thank you so much for sending me free plants. This is quite beautiful. It looks like it could be the 
Le lemon lime philodendron? I'm not sure. So I'm gonna start potting these guys up actually. I'm gonna waste no time. It's getting, it's getting dark. I actually see ants crawling around in here. That's not good. <laughs> it's carrying something in its mouth. Maybe uh, mealybugs, probably. So uh, I'm gonna quarantine that first, okay. Yeah, there are a lot of ants on the table right now. <laughs> I made a huge mess. It's like soil all over the floor. I find that these sprays actually do a good job with, uh, uh, what do you call it? Dry soil, because dry soil actually needs to absorb the water slowly. Otherwise the water's just gonna either uh, trail off the side of the pot or it's just gonna find the fastest way down into the pot, which means that it's not gonna dry even, it's not gonna get wet evenly in the pot. So this is the fastest way and most efficient way for that I found to keep um, dry, dry new soil a bit moist. Uh, with ferns, uh, bright indirect light, some direct sunlight will be very good for them, uh, but not, not full sun. And they need to be watered every day, never let it dry out. So that's my, my care tip for ferns. And they, I'm really, really happy with this seller because um, they sent me really good plants at this, and at this price. These ferns look so gorgeous. Oh. Um, I actually, uh, the fern that I have now, which is really, really big, I got it really banged up. It was so terrible when I received it uh, and it recovered so well. Okay, so this guy, I'm gonna give it an aeroid soil mix because I, I feel like this is a plant that may wanna dry out a bit between waterings. So I have a feeling that this is a Thermatophyllum salum which I have quite a few of them all over the house. I got them as babies a year ago and like smaller than this probably. And then they are now pre a lot bigger, but the leaves are all different. It's hard to tell like in their juvenile form. So yeah, let me figure this out later. This is the main attraction. This is what spurred the, the plant uh, purchases actually. And I've got a lot of these um, uh, cordylines. <laughs> Uh, that are coming, that are on the way. So yeah, I'm having a cordyline moment right now. They're so beautiful. It's getting really dark. And the roots look very healthy. I'm gonna give it uh, my all-purpose soil. And it's done, it's beautiful. Oh my God, this new leaf that is trying to roll out, it's so beautiful because it's got this yellow rim. So it's like, it's so nice. I don't think this pot is tall enough because I see some of the roots sticking out, but it's as deep as it can go. Okay, I'm gonna leave it as it is because I'm running out of time today. Yeah, normally I would have given it a, a bigger pot because it's, yeah, it, the roots are all the way up here. <laughs> got one more. Aglonema here and uh, they want to be in well in fast draining soil by the way especially for an overwaterer like me oh beautiful roots very nice as you can see it's very tuberous and thick roots it does not need a lot of water I see an ant but I, d I don't know there could be pests in here I'm just gonna treat everything with pests so I'm <laughs> Do we like this? Yeah, it looks nice. So I use the same soil mix with uh, Calatheas actually. Uh, if you want to know my soil recipe, go to my soil video. Getting crowded in here. Uh, I'm gonna do the coleus. Okay, so I'm actually just gonna finish up here. It's getting really dark. You won't be able to see anything in a few minutes. Uh, I'm going to show you the close-ups of the details for, of these plants uh, bright, bright and early in the morning. So I'm going to kind of uh, spray them down and let them hang out here uh, for the night because this is a pretty comfortable place for them to be. So I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. So here's the uh, update for the next day. Uh, everything's still alive, thankfully. Uh, yeah. So um, I'm going to go to the dentist and I have another uh, shipment that's coming in today. So I'll show you that in a bit. 
So it's the second day evening and another package came in. I've got a few more by the way. We're not even halfway through yet. And uh, let me see. So everything's nice and bundled up in here. Uh, so that's cool. I think this is the uh, Calathea Warsaw Whiskey Eye that I ordered. I thought the price looked a little bit cheap. And I noticed, I don't think this is the Warsaw Whiskey Eye. This is something else. This looks like a reverted uh, Calathea White Fusion, which I'm looking at on the floor. Yeah, I already got so many of those. This is pretty crazy. I don't know why they're sending me this instead. Yeah. If I'm not wrong, the Warsaw Whiskey Eye have like thicker leaves. And it's like a little bit fuzzy, if I'm not wrong. So this is definitely the reverted uh, white fusion. That happens sometimes when you order something and the price is a little bit off. Sometimes you get a steal, you get a bargain. Like the Aglonima yesterday, that was totally a steal. And then you get these like plants that are either sold dishonestly or the seller genuinely didn't know uh, what it was. I, I don't know what this is. This looks... Oh, um... I believe this was sold to me as a home melomina white something, white stripes or white... I don't see the... there's only a little bit of white on here. I'm not very thrilled with this. This looks... Uh, and the yellowing leaves, this is normal. Just take it off. Yeah, this seller looks pretty... pretty uh, disappointing. I don't remember what this is. This looks like a... Like an abish, a pishkia? I don't remember ordering it. So I'll, I'll, I'll put the name on the, on the screen of what I ordered. <laughs> a little bit annoyed by this. Ah, so this is a, a Glunima. Oh, I can't remember the name. Uh, yeah, it's all right. It's not amazing. It looks, it looks kind of trippy actually. It's, it's uh, the coloring. I love Aglonimas. I'm having a, an Aglonima moment right now. Um, it looks like digital printing basically on the leaves. <laughs> Yeah, not particularly thrilling. I'm gonna pop these up, um, including this one. I'm, I'm just so pissed looking at it. Uh, yeah, it's def I'm looking at my plan. It's definitely the same one. Ooh, and uh, I see mealybugs <laughs> here under the aglonema. I, I don't mind it. The only thing is like, I think this seller is just so obviously, uh, what is the right word for it? I'm trying to be nice, but I'm not. It's it's not really qualified, I think, to sell plants. So there you have it. Nobody wants to sell you a pest infested plant. No, that's what I believe universally. So, um, but this seller is unforgivable. I think the plants were in bad shape and they sent the wrong plants and they were just not mind blowing. That's my uh, <laughs> pest solution right here from yesterday. Die, mealybugs, die. Yeah. So I've just potted up everybody and I made sure to uh, add extra uh, pesticide <laughs> on the soil as well as spray down heavily uh, with my neem oil solution. So hopefully the pests are gone. Hello, so it's day three evening and we've got three packages that came in today. So I'm gonna get started. I opened the boxes, but I haven't looked at inside the box yet because I don't look good when I'm opening boxes. I'm really struggling with it. So <laughs> yeah. Oh, they wrapped this up in, uh, oh, this is a Syngonia Mojito. Very nice. And yeah, and an alloca allocation. I don't remember ordering this, but <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, so I got a Syngonia Mojito uh, and the seller asked me if I wanted uh, one leaf or two leaves. <laughs> Hang on, I think I do remember ordering the Alocasia. But it looks a little bit different. Hang on. Uh, I don't think this is the best idea to, to pack plants in, only because, I don't know, in my mind's eye, they can't really breathe in the plastic. I don't know, I could be wrong. I've been wanting to get this uh, Syngonia Mojito for a long time now. It's been on my wish list for a while.
Very nice. I'm super impressed. Uh, there's a third leaf coming along the way. The, uh, the, the splash is just so beautiful. I can't stop staring at it. It's just nice. Yeah, if you if pack your plants like this, uh, you may rot the plant too if it's too long in the box because it's just so much moisture in there. I don't know, this guy's like covered in water and this is soggy wet. So it might have been better off if it's just in a box where there's a little bit more air circulation in there. So I'm gonna try to reuse these bags. Don't throw away your plastic, you guys. Uh, see if you can uh, repurpose them where possible. Very healthy root system. Nice. Yeah, it's not a lot of roots, but it's very, very healthy. It's white color roots. That's what we want to see. And this one looks... Uh, Pretty okay so far. It's a little bit brown, but not all roots are white, by the way. Some roots are just darker in color than others. But this looks healthy otherwise. I don't see any crisping. Everything looks fine. Okay, I'm just going to give them a, a terracotta pot and an all-purpose, uh, a general uh, potting soil. I love this combination for, for general plants because actually the in I use a lot of soil amendments in my... Uh, in my uh, general purpose soil mix and then that terracotta combination lets them dry out pretty fast. That's a root that keeps trying to stick out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ignore it. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna spray the whole thing down with neem, my neem oil solution because alocasias are really well known for spider mites. Okay. Super cute. I love this look. This store gave me free uh, slow release fertilizers. <laughs> I've seen them in this color, but I don't. I'm not gonna use it. I think because, or maybe I am. I'm gonna use it on plants that I don't care about. Only because I don't know the NPK value of that. So I don't know if I should put it on my plants or not. I'm just not confident. What is this? I believe this should be an African violet. Yeah, it's fuzzy leaves. Oh my god. I've been wanting one of these for a while now. So cute, some leaves fell off. I don't know, can they be propagated from leaves like a begonia? I'm not sure. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna stick this into soil just to see what happens. I hope this plant doesn't die on me. It looks... The leaves don't look the healthiest. Oh, it's so fuzzy. I love it. I love you. So correct me if I'm wrong, but African violets, I think they like uh, lower light, low to medium light, and um, they don't like to be watered very often at all. Like they need to dry out because it's got fuzzy leaves. Usually plants with fuzzy leaves are not tolerant to overwatering. Yeah, very cute. Ah, another uh, rattlesnake calathea. I've got one of these, but I wanted more because that one was kind of declining. And I, I, I left it in the, uh, what's the area called? By the koi pond, like where, the, where I did the video before with that stone wall. It, uh, it, it looks fine there. It's not like putting out insane amount of growth. And it was growing a lot. From, I see the little um, thing here. I'm, I'm thinking if I should pluck this out and pull, uh, there's a bulb, sorry, yeah. I wonder if a plant will emerge from here. I have a feeling it will if you plant the, just the bulb. Uh, here's another one that I had as a duplicate because mine is like dying and this one looks dying to the yellowing leaves. They're very, this one's the, I forgot the name of this uh, Calathea, but it's the one with very, very fuzzy leaves. Again, fuzzy leaf plants, they cannot be overwatered. So. 
Let me see if I have any similar looking plants that need potting up at the same time. So yeah, this Calatheus, they actually did a lot better when I had it in my bedroom. When I had uh, checked on the moisture every day and made sure to water it immediately when it's bone dry, but not wait too long. Uh, and then since I put it outside, it's just been declining because I just watered it <laughs> kind of whenever because it's hard to uh, test the moisture of every plant when they're outdoors. There's so many of them. Okay, so next we have another cordyline. This is beautiful. It's dark uh, purple, uh, purple green uh, with a very maroon or fuchsia uh, rim around the edge of the leaves. I'm gonna uh, tease the roots a little bit first before I pot it. And I'm gonna give this a general purpose uh, potting soil. So I've got this really beautiful plant. I forgot the name, but I bought two of them. Uh, they're slightly different uh, variations. I'll put the name of the ID on the screen. I actually saw a few sellers uh, post this on uh, Instagram uh, this week, so I, I was curious about it. Um, and the way that the market works, I guess, a lot of these probably came into cultivation and they're ready, so a lot of people are selling them. Uh, that's why we're seeing uh, sort of a, a trend. So yeah, since they're in stock, let's make these trendy. <laughs> they're quite beautiful. It's just, I don't think this one is particularly healthy. Um, yeah, I might see some mealybugs on here. They're like white. Yeah, I see mealybugs on here. And there's some leaves that are not doing well. Ooh, there are a lot of mealybugs. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm going to give this a, let me see. Yeah, this plant has the lowest chance of survival, I think, seeing the the shape that it's in. Otherwise, the roots look pretty healthy. I shake the soil off. Then this one, the roots actually look very healthy, very white. And I'm not sure what kind of potting media these would like. Uh, I'm just gonna give it a general purpose uh, potting soil. I actually bought a lot of plants from this seller. Oh, another cordyline. Nice, this one is beautiful. I think this is the one that caught my eye. It's got this lime lemon green with a, a pink rim around it. Beautiful. Very cute. Ooh, this is a uh, Tradescantia. It's not as pink as it looks in the photo. I'm a little bit disappointed. This is like all green. It's either a wrong species or it's lost its variegation. I'll put on screen the, the photo from the seller. And uh, Tradescantia, they cannot be overwatered. Ooh, I see a mealybug. No, that's a destroyer. I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's moving really fast. So there's, uh, if you see white fuzz, it's either mealybugs or the, the bug that eats mealybug. <laughs> I don't know if I'm making any sense, but yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna, it, uh, it's in a pretty fast draining soil and it's pretty uh, rooted into this uh, rice hull media. So I'm just gonna use it. I'm just gonna continue. <laughs> I'm just gonna like force, force it force its way into the into this pot <laughs> and I'm done <laughs> I've got another Calathea here this is the all green uh, I don't know the name let's, let's put that on the screen so it's similar to the two that we uh, potted up before this one's trying to put out shoots so it's Probably very healthy, a lot of cool shoots. Again, I'm very, very heavy handed with my watering. This is why I have to use very airy soil, soil mix for most of my plants. 
If you're a neglectful plant parent, then don't go with this combination. Oh, I got another Fitonia, by the way. Uh, actually, I did. I pulled out a Fitonia for a video, I think about a week ago, and I even took some uh, photos for Instagram. And then I just put it somewhere and forgot it for two days, and it died. So they're really, really diva plants. They they don't like to be moved, and they want constant attention. You can't just leave them somewhere and 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 forget about them. They want you to remember them. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. So this plant doesn't look doesn't look that exciting to me. <laughs> so in our climate, phytonias have to dry out between watering. So I'm gonna give it um, a terracotta pot. Yeah, this is not this is barely rooted. I think they're actually um, phytonias are actually quite impressive plants, and I really want to learn how to propagate them. Uh, I have a feeling they they won't be that hard to propagate, but I may be wrong. And they're very very inexpensive. This is why I came to that conclusion that they're easy to propagate. See another cordyline, love it. Yeah, as I, as I mentioned earlier, this is uh, mostly a cordyline shopping video. They're very inexpensive and the foliage is beautiful. And I want like the ones that I got here are actually not healthy, but I believe that they can become healthy under my care. Um, and it will look like a million dollars after they're healthy. <laughs> so I need to give them some time to recover. Very nice, cute. I see a mealybug here too. I think these plants definitely need to be <laughs> on quarantine. Ah, this is beautiful. I, don't, I can't remember what the, oh. Ah, this is lavender. Oh, excited for this one. It smells so good. It's a, a different variation of lavender. And in my experience, lavenders, they don't transplant very well. So if they're big enough, I may actually take a cutting um, from here and root one of them in water for plant insurance because all the lavenders that I previously bought, they died. <laughs> so give them, uh, uh, they do really well in terracotta pot because they do need to dry out quickly, uh, but they also need to be watered frequently and they need uh, full sun. Very nice. Oh, another cordyline, and this one is so beautiful. Wow. Oh, it's very, very fuchsia. I don't know if the camera will pi ever pick it up. Oh, wow. Ooh. The old leaves are actually green, and the new ones, this one, is particularly very, very red. Nice. <laughs> I think uh, bright light gives them that color, too. So. So generally, with this cellar, actually, all the plants look pretty decent. So I, I kind of recommend it. The roots look healthy. The packing is good, uh, with exceptions of a few mealybugs, which is totally normal. It's fine. You just have to be on top of them. I don't see any pests or ants on the soil. So yeah. Oh, I forgot. I'm going to actually tease out the roots a bit, uh, loosen them up so they'll, um, they'll adapt easily into the new uh, soil. Okay, ooh, there's one more. Uh, so this one's uh, from a seller for, uh, on Instagram, and it's already potted up. So let me see what kind of soil media it's in. Usually when it's already potted up, I leave it alone for a few days. I don't repot it right away. So yeah, it's this beautiful syngonium with really sinister looking leaves that it's like arrow shaped. And the underside is just the red in color, it's a maroon. It's so beautiful, it's, oh, it's like a begonia color. And this is telling me that it likes uh, lower light than most syngoniums because of the red back. Oh, and lately a lot of the plant sellers from uh, the Bogor area are sending plants in Korean newspapers. So there's a lot of Korean newspaper out there. That somehow that's not being used. Oh, it's in this uh, andam, I would say, mix, which is uh, dried twigs. It's okay, it's, not a, it's, not, it's pretty good uh, soil media for them, I guess. So yeah, I'm not gonna repot them. So from that uh, last cellar is this Anthurium forgetii dark form. I believe this is the new leaf because it's still very soft. I'm not gonna disturb it, but it looks fine otherwise. Uh, the pot is way too big for my liking. I'm not sure if this is uh, underwatered, but I'm actually going to check the soil. I watered it today. I'm not sure what is. Yeah, it's quite wet, so I'm gonna leave it alone. And I'm gonna take you outside for the other plant. I've got two of them. Okay, so I'm actually taking you guys to the front of the house. Um, there's actually a section here in a garden that nobody goes to. And my dad has been asking me to build up this area. 
Uh, so I may do that. <laughs> this is a little thing here you have to cross. Uh, yeah, this is a very cool place for plants only because um, there's indirect light all day long and it's got a wood plank. So this is quite a beautiful place. Uh, so yeah, this, <laughs> this is why you should watch my videos till the very end because you're gonna see something different. Yeah, so this is a preview of the space that I may work with soon. It's quite beautiful and serene. And the only reason why I'm so hesitant about working here is that I don't know if you can see, uh, even on the camera, there's a lot of mosquitoes here. A lot of them. And there's a lot of uh, sensivirias, quite beautiful. And, and these are actually the babies. So they came off really big plants. <laughs> uh, and the plants are indoors. And there are a lot of peace lilies. My dad really likes the peace lilies that are variegated. But um, I digress. <laughs> okay, so what we're here to see is this Anthurium magnificum. Um, so yeah, this is from that last cellar. I actually haven't really looked up close to it yet until now. Huge, this is so big. <gasps> oh my God. Yeah, so I put him here because I wanted um, like a really big plant here and a huge Melanochrysum as well uh, as a centerpiece for this uh, area. So this is perfect and it's got a new growth point. So I'm actually excited about it. And I'm here to check out. And look at the aerial roots. Oh my God. I may actually wrap this up in Ooh, hang on one second. I see white specks. I'm not sure what they are. It could be... It's not moving. <laughs> so, let me... Uh... Oh yeah, it's very wet. So let me air it uh, while I'm here. I'm gonna... I don't know. I think a gardener probably water this every day. So I'm gonna aerate the soil a bit. Let it dry out. And I'm gonna probably uh, move him into a terracotta pot because this area gets watered very heavily daily. It's got sprinklers and stuff happening, so it needs to be super fast draining. It's exactly one month from the day of the unboxing, and these are the quarter lines. Um, they live here where they get double direct sunlight and some morning direct sunlight. Uh, they seem to really enjoy that, um, that strong sun, and they cannot be left to dry out. But I did notice one of the leaves on this one uh, did yellow and uh, fell off so yeah I have to be aware of the moisture as well so apparently they can be overwatered and the new leaves oh my god the leaves are so glossy uh, these I believe these two unfurled uh, recently and that's another one coming and yeah as you can see this is the newest leaf and another one's along the way this one as well so they seem happy here these are very very easy plants and someone commented uh, in my Instagram post that they can be propagated the same way as Aglaonimus that's amazing. Uh, and here's that weirdo. I still don't know the plant ID, but it seems to be uh, turning pink or yellow on the edges, which could suggest overwatering. Or, I don't know, it looks very bleached out for some reason. Or maybe this is the way that it just looks naturally. So yeah, it's not dead yet, and it looks like it's actually still putting out growth. And here's the plant, uh, and apparently it turned very pink. And I actually, uh, move some of the trailing bits down to the next pot to see if it will propagate. It's actually quite beautiful. Remember that when I unboxed it, it used to be all green. So it's now a shade of pink and white on the new growth. And I believe that the leaves will turn green at some point. This is quite beautiful, actually. Here's the uh, Hypotis? Hypotis? I don't know how to say it. Hypotis? <laughs> uh, but this one was the one with particularly long vine. Let me put this down on the floor. And actually uh, cut with the, one of the vines and stuck it back into the soil. So now I have two pieces of this plant. Uh, and this one may be rooting too. If I leave it like that, it may just root into the media. And just, imagine like a bushy plant. This is actually quite nice and a pretty fast grower. And here's the other one. Oh, I'm stepping on a lot of things. Yeah, beautiful. And uh, here's that Syngonium red arrow and Actually, I saw someone's vlog and I uh, can't remember, I'm <laughs> sorry, but uh, th this person said that this is a very slow grower and I definitely agree. This hasn't really grown much in my care and it's putting out these tiny leaves. So maybe I need to get it um, to, to climb up a moss pole to get bigger leaves. And here's that Fitonia. It looks happy, it's fine. It hasn't put out any new growth. I'm uh, checking for bugs. Nothing, it looks um, stabilizing. This next one is the uh, Calathea rattlesnake. 
and this hasn't done anything for me either I don't see any new growth point but it's very much alive um, this is the Rufi Barbara I believe the fuzzy one uh, it's not done anything for me either um, these are actually very slow growers and these ones oh this is putting out a new growth over here as you can see uh, yeah I, this plant I think it's a very fast grower if I'm not wrong this is the one that I claim to be a reverted um, white fusion uh, this little fuzzy guy is growing like crazy actually look at the new growth points but tiny leaves uh, this is the this fuzzy one uh, it looks actually really beautiful I'm surprised I haven't killed it yet this is one of the ones that are I think is the harder one it's putting out a new leaf so this looks really healthy to me I'm happy with this one I love how the leaves look after the rain it's glossy I mean it's fuzzy but glossy at the same time and here's a jewel orchid uh, I know it doesn't look like much but I think it's growing a little bit it's slow and it's <laughs> the pot is way too big for it but yeah it's it's alive I'm still figuring out how to care for it. I think it likes to be on the drier side. I think I may have been overwatering this person because I put it next to my other orchids, so I just hold them down every day, twice a day even sometimes. And here is that hosta. And it didn't, didn't put out any leaves, so I guess it's busy putting out roots. <laughs> the uh, Syngonia mojito is oh, its putting out a lot of leaves actually. Let me see. Yeah, there's one coming along the way. I don't know if you can see it. There's one coming along the way. I think this one is the new one. And yeah, those two are the ones that we have had before. This is looking healthy. And this plant did nothing. Uh, didn't grow anything, I think. And uh, I think I need to give it more light to see if I can encourage that uh, white uh, stripe to appear more. So I'm going to move it to another place. And here's that Anthurium forgetii. It's under a lot of stress. This is the new leaf. It's uh, <laughs> crisping up a bit. I found out that the, this wasn't rooted at all. Like, uh, remember I showed you that this was, this was in a huge pot. So I took it out of the pot and it was just a lump with a tiny, tiny amount of root. So it's basically a fresh cutting that was put inside a big pot. So yeah, something tried to grow and I think, oh, it flowered. Sorry, I cut out the flower, but something else tried to grow and I think it's not happening. So. This is pretty scary. I'm just leaving it in here, keeping it damp, let it root, and hopefully it will survive. Yeah, the one leaf is almost gone, <laughs> one of the older leaves. And here's that aglonema, and it's doing well. This is actually uh, somewhere between medium to low light. And the ferns aren't actually doing that well, but this is normal. I kind of expected it. Uh, this is the other one. Uh, ferns, they don't do well with uh, soil transplant. So it will be in decline like this for about, I would say two to three months. And then new fronds would start emerging from below like crazy. So give it time. And here's that other Aglonema, Donastera. Don <laughs> can't remember the name. But it's looking beautiful. Now, I don't know if it's grown any new leaves. I can't see that before, but there's something coming along the way. So yeah. <laughs> and this place gets morning direct sunlight. And uh, I don't know, like right now, I guess this is, this is medium to bright indirect light, I guess. Ooh, and while I'm here, I'm going to spoil you guys for a bit. Here is a um, shelf un unit that I'm uh, installing. It's still quite messy. And this is actually full sun. It's going to get about six to eight hours of full sun. And I don't have a spot like that so far. So I'm very, very thankful to have this space to work with. So these are all my full sun plants. This is a citrus, uh, this is I think a gardenia, this is hibiscus, uh, rosemary, and this is more hibiscus. This was a gift, a cutting that uh, rooted. So yeah, ooh, something's happening here. Let me check. Let me pick up this leaf. I don't see any pests. Oh, hello. Hello, hang on. Don't run away yet. I want to take, I want to film you. Look at that cool grasshopper. Can you see it? Oh my god, it's not focusing. How cute. Hello. Is it eating the leaves? I don't know. I think, yeah, they do eat the leaves. And here is the alocasia. It's put out a new baby leaf. Very cute. Uh, this leaf is showing signs of stress, but that's very normal. And I must say that uh, the alocasias are thriving in this uh, rainy season. So I guess they do prefer 
uh, sort of weather or humid um, soil and air and yeah and this anthurium is flowering very cute and look at this leaf it's so big oh my god oh, cute it's gonna get much bigger leaves too uh, oh and there's a little stowaway here I don't know if I pointed that last time uh, there are some small uh, little bites marks uh, but that's okay yeah something bit it but it's living its best life out in the wild they are not gonna get perfect leaf out in the wild not worried about it let me check for new growth nope uh, I don't see any no new growth points yet but sometimes they put out one or even two uh, if I should peel this open yeah this is a new um, growth point happening right here so this is happy all right so I guess this is all the time I have for you today I think I covered everybody I'm sorry if I missed out a plant in this update I can't remember everything that I own but uh, yeah uh, hope that you guys are staying safe at home and do take care I will see you in the next video bye